So this is the 1990 40 horsepower I've been working on for weeks and uh, just did a whole bunch of work to it so I want to make sure it's still going to fire up. started right up incredibly well actually. All I did was prompt up the uh, primer bulb, hit the choke, turn the key, fired right up. And it was uh, pretty quickly too. So that's uh, that's very good. Um, if you notice it missed a little bit, so things are a little off. Not bad, but just a little off. So we're going to have some fixing to do. Um, a very common problem with these things are these rollers to fall apart. If you notice this one has both fallen apart, both this one and this one back here. Uh, when I got it, I noticed that the plastic had long deteriorated and was cracking apart. And then when I was doing the carburetors, the rest of this one fell off. This one was already long gone. So they both need to be replaced. And that's pretty common in every one of these things. Uh, I got a couple more around here I'll go take a picture of them and show you. But, yeah. So those will need to get changed. Um, I'm going to do the spark plugs first. Our, I got two new Champion QL 78Cs. Um, pre-gapped, well not pre-gapped, but I gapped them at uh, 0 .030, so let's go ahead and put new plugs in it, and we'll take the uh, ignition timing from there. And the uh, two original spark plugs. They really weren't that bad, but they're cheap enough, might as well change them. Now in this model, the roller is held in with a little uh, rubber O-ring. I got a spare, just in case I needed it. Which, using a razor blade to get it off there, I probably will, so let me get something else. That ain't working either. Okay, the little ring is off. Take off the washer. And we'll be able to slide the roller out. Or at least what's left of it in my case. Slide our new one in. It came with a new washer, might as well put that in. Bump the camera, sorry about that. Alright. Pretty new washers on, and we just put on our ugly old O-ring, and we're good. So there's one. Tightened up the ignition quite a bit already. Now we'll go ahead and do the front. And that's what they should look like. So we are at uh, neutral right now, and our little arrows aren't lining up with our rollers. This one, yeah, not too bad. This one, not at all. So we're going to have some uh, linkage adjusting to do. Pro somebody probably messed with this in the past, kind of threw everything off. So might as well just check it all, make it, make sure it's right. Uh, there's going to be some problems with uh, doing this at home. We'll go through that in a bit. So you might want to watch it all the way through. And. Uh, According to the yield manual there, every one of these steps is uh, pretty crucial. So we'll be following it to the letter and yeah, just seeing how it goes. One is to remove the cable from the throttle lever, which basically means I gotta pull this pin out right here. Step two is to measure 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 the throttle control rod from center to center should be 7 and 13 sixteenths so I'm gonna go ahead and delete an inch so I'm not trying to use the this end start it on one and go to 8 and 13 sixteenths so we uh, were a little off need to go out a, I don't know probably two turns to uh, line up looks like we're at a uh, 5 eighths right about now so We'll adjust that out. 
And then, uh, yeah, take it from there. Now this one is the spark control rod. The center of the ball sockets need to be 2 and 1 16th. Don't really know how they uh, plan on measuring that considering the ball sockets are on two completely different angles. But we'll, uh, we'll give it a try. Using my uh, caliper for this. Figured it'd be a little more accurate. So honestly, it looks dead on at 2 and 1 16th. I've got this side on the uh, center of the ball, and this side is right in the uh, center of the ball shaft. So, yeah, I think that is that's pretty perfect right there, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it. So now what I uh, just did and forgot to record was to move the cam follower away from the, uh, the cam roller here. So you do that to adjust the screw. The problem is you don't really have much room there. So it didn't really, I don't really see it doing anything. Getting a little more out of the way, but whatever. We need to adjust our idle screw to make sure our roller is between these two marks. So I'm gonna loosen our uh, little tightening screw just a hair. And then pull this back out a bit. like about there. That'd be good. Maybe that turn out. Yeah, and it's a little resting spot here. It's right between. So I'm going to call that good. Put the snap back in. Tighten it down. Lock that little uh, screw where it should be. Now it's time for the throttle plate synchronization. So to do that, we loosen our top little adjusting screw and we allow both carburetors to snap shut. And that kind of should do it. Both feel nice and uh, closed. So we definitely got that going for us. Yeah. Screw back down. And both of our carburetors should be operating at the same time. And to verify it, you can kind of see the little pointers on the back side here. I'm not even going to try to get them in the video, but they're there and they look like they're pretty synced up. So I need to move the throttle cam forward, and this little line right here needs to point to the center of this little ball. And this needs to be touching, and the throttle plates up here need to be closed. So when all of those things happen, we tighten our screw down. Looks like I'm a little off. Again. I think that should do it right there. So now we push our Throttle advance back against its stop, and we verify these are still in between the roller. They are, so we're good there. Now, 
We're supposed to measure the gap of this roller to that plate, which is 0 0.1 inch or 0.25 millimeter. Now, that is extremely small. That is, you know, a third of this razor blade. I measured the tip, and that is 0 0.01 inch. So there should be a hair gap here. I get my razor blade in there, not much more than that. Eh, I'm going to call that good enough because I can't measure any much smaller than that. And, uh, yeah, I really think that'll be fine. So that's basically what I'm going with. So that should be it for our Lincoln Sync. Um, now we got to do timing, and that's where our problem kicks in. Let's, let me read you an excerpt from the Evnerd Bible here. This is for the uh, maximum spark advance, or the, the timing adjustment. Run the engine with the correct test propeller. So right there, we're dead in the water. Pun intended. Um, they don't make the test propeller anymore. And I haven't seen a used one come up for sale in seven, eight months. And the same thing with uh, going to auction or on eBay. They're just not out there. I don't think many shops want to get rid of them because it spans, you know, I think 13 years of engines. 40, 48, and 50 horsepower engines. It's a popular engine. So if you're a repair shop and you have one of those propellers, it's not something you're necessarily eager to sell because it's a newer, common, well-built motor that people want to fix. They don't want to sell the only tool they have to be able to properly time them. Getting them is pretty hard to do. So if you need one, you can't buy an older test propeller because the shape of the lower unit is slightly different and it rubs. You might be able to use an E-Tech one. I don't feel like spending $300 to test fit it on there to find out. But that might be an option if you can find one cheap enough. Either way, you can't get the proper test propeller right now for this outboard. And that is a serious problem. But, you could go out at night and hook up a timing light while you're going down the uh, river or the water. You know, full throttle and uh, check your timing that way so you're not entirely, you know, undoable to check it. But realistically, that's that's just... You know, a problem waiting to happen doing that. However, I will do that. Hashtag YOLO. But we'll go ahead and rig up a test propeller and uh, test it out. First thing I'm going to need to do is pull off the manual starter to make sure that that's not going to be in my way of seeing the uh, timing marks. Get this thing into a bucket of water, hook up some electronics, and we'll do a little uh, test run of it. I have a controller hooked up and a tachyom yeah, tachometer hooked up. I have it in a rigged up test tank with a rigged up uh, test propeller. So I'll fill it with water, get some gas, and we'll start this thing up. And of course, got a new timing light for it. Um, reason I need a new timing light, I kind of left my old one on an engine, started it up, drove it around, timing light hit the header, and it melted. So I needed a new timing. So, slight problem. Kinda ran out of gas. So that's not good. But, that's remedied now by yeah, getting more gas. Uh, before I ran out of gas, I put it in gear. Wanted to kinda test the timing. I got it up to about, uh, I don't know, 3,000 RPM. And it was slowly rising, so I do think it's gonna hit the RPM it's supposed to. Um, I'll have to put it in the water and verify. Reason being, that test propeller on there emptied my tank in 20 seconds. Incredible amount of water. Now, test tanks are supposed to be deeper and have a little cover to them. Well, now I know why. So, I, I can't really make do with anything I have here. But, like I said, I'll put it in the water and then uh, do all this again. Well, speed should be 750, give or take 25 RPM. So I'm going to start it up, play with the timing a little bit, and see if we can't get it uh, pretty close to that. Looks like we're just shy of, I don't know, 500, so probably up it up, up it a little bit. So, at idle here at 750 RPM about, we should be at 4 degrees. So with our timing light, it 
looks like we are right there. So as far as time, idle timing goes, we're fine. Although, keep in mind, we're not actually in the water. We're just kind of in a test tank here. But for the most part, that's pretty close. Engine's idling okay. Probably needs to warm up a little more. For the most part, I think this thing's good to dry out on the water. So here's an upside down. Little contact type tachometer. And you can see the RPM's fluctuating. So I don't really know if it's a huge deal. But it's making it sound like it's running a little off. in the medium gear selector now. That's what the space is, a little gearbox. So I put a zero on the end and that's where our reading is. So we're uh, just shy of a thousand RPM right now. And you can see it fluctuating a little bit. Anywhere between, uh, I don't know, 50 RPM it looks like. So it's, uh, it's just a little off causing the engine not quite to run right. It's got an even 129 PSI in each cylinder, so that's good. No leak down between the two, also good. There, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good power head. Um, I've already messed with the carburetor timing over and over again, and I can't get it any closer to it uh, running smoothly via carburetor adjustments. So I'm kind of wondering if one of the floats is a little off. So I'm going to uh, take it all back apart again and check the float uh, levels and see if that's our problem. It seems as though the problem lies within the top carburetor. This is the carburetor float gauge. This is the carburetor. And you can see that's uh, about as perfect as you're getting. Let me show you the, uh, the top. All right, now this is the top carburetor. Come on, focus camera. What's wrong with you? There we go. Yeah, it actually looks fine in the picture. Now oh, there we go. I have it sitting off. See how the back is okay, but the front's dropping down a little bit. And maybe hard to tell. But uh, the entire thing is sitting downward, kind of like that. So I think it's just a little float adjustment. You can see the gap difference there as well. Let me show you the other one. And see it there. Top carb, it'll need some adjusting. Um, I'll do that, make sure they're nice and uh, level, and then I'll put it all back together. Engine is back together. Let's get some fuel back in it, start it back up, and see if that uh, fixed anything. So at this point it was running about as good as I uh, think I'm going to be able to get it in the test tank. Um, also I think my ability to explain what the instructions say may be a little off so I'm going to go ahead and uh, post the written copy so you'll be able to pause if you need to to uh, look at that. And uh, yeah I'm going to readdress the uh, fine tuning of the timing once I get the boat in the water and then we'll uh, kind of see how it does. Now, after a test run, I always kind of give them a wash down. Well, even, even when I take them out, 
I still bring along some soap and a sponge and wash the outboard down when I'm done. Keeps the oil build up off of it. Keeps it working halfway decent. Just good practice, I suppose. So that's kind of the end of this video. Um, didn't go quite as I had hoped, but when I get it to the water, I'll uh, revisit the timing. Make sure it's okay. We'll check the timing light. What I did see for those few seconds, it's probably fine. So, uh, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, etc., 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 and uh, we'll see you all next time.